Hi, we're here today to talk about how to apply to IT Masters Charles Sturt University. My name's Shane, and I'll be guiding you through the process with the inimitable help and very necessary help of Kat and Lil, who are the IT Masters admissions people. They will look after your application once it hits us. Say hello, Kat and Lil. Hello. Hi. Welcome. So, first step, how do I get to apply to anybody, any of the courses. If you're looking at the IT Masters homepage, it's often really easy because often the first thing you see is apply now. And that actually takes you though to this page, which is how to apply, the IT Masters how to apply, because it gives you quite a bit of information about sessions, what's there, what's happening, and when the start dates are, and has a button there, a red button that says apply now. And that takes you directly to the Charles Sturt University page where you actually submit your application and start off. If, for example, though, you've gone to the home of Charles Sturt University, csu.edu.au, do not click on this. Go to the red apply button because this one over here takes you somewhere you don't want to go. This is the one you want to go. And you'll see when you click on that, that will take you to exactly the same place. Start your application to study. I will warn you that you will have to register with Charles Sturt University for a, uh, an account as part of this process. You can pre-do it, but it will let you do it during the process as well. So you've come to us and you want to study, say, the graduate certificate in um, career transition, in computing career transition. That's a good one for us to look at today because many people come to us with that. It's postgraduate because it's a graduate certificate. In fact, all IT Masters courses are postgraduate, so you should always click on that first. And then you look at the type of study. And what were you telling me before, Lil? Which which one of these do we click on or how many of them? It will be just that very last option there, or all our postgraduate courses. Great. Even if you were going for a Masters, you can still use this one. So we always say, just use that one. Great. They've found the right form for us and we're ready to apply, although, you still have to register if you haven't registered already. So you're not really ready to apply. But if you have, like me, you can just log in. And my application will come up and I can go in. So, there is some information for you to read here about the sorts of documents you might want. What are the two most important documents that we need, Kat? Uh, the two most important would be your Australian citizenship or um, PR or visa, um, as well as your resume. Great. There's a reason why that is the case, because... Uh, we will not receive your application until your citizenship or permanent residency status has been verified by Charles Sturt. And as we process the applications, you want to get it to us as fast as you can. So the next thing you want to be doing is studying. Is this the correct one, Lil? Postgraduate by coursework. Yes, that's right. And I also want to add there, Shane, that if you're, you were born in Australia, you don't have to add in your Australian citizenship. Right. Do you have to have a birth certificate or some other proof? Nope. And we're now ready to start creating the application. You put your name in, that's pre-filled uh, because I have already previously applied. A lot of our students, by the way, end up applying one or two more times because they apply for a graduate certificate. Then they might do another graduate certificate or a diploma or jump straight onto a master's. It's important if you've got a name change somewhere in your history that you put your former name down because it might be on some of the paperwork that you're using, date of birth, your gender, male, female, or unspecified, your country you were born in, your citizenship, and your residency. Uh, that's what Lil was talking about before. Contact details are important, um, mobile phone number. And your email address, of course, is part of the application process. There's some specific mandatory questions from the government. They want to know if you're of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander origin, and that will give you some additional support options. And they want to know 
which level of schooling uh, your parents have completed. Um, often our students are people who are the first people in their families that have attended university, for example. Okay, now we go through and talk about my details of education. I went to high school only. That's pretty typical of our students, isn't it, Kat? Yes, I would say so. Uh, we think more than half of our students come to us with only secondary education or maybe not even having completed secondary education before they come yeah. in. Sometimes TAFE, um, a Cert 4, um, which, you know, we use work experience as a method of entry into our most of our um, courses here at the grad cert level. That's right. So it doesn't really matter. If you tried to search for your high school, um, for example, one of the many I went to, oops, was not found, which means it must have changed. Oh, no, there we go. Hamilton High School Vic, uh, Hamilton Senior High School WA. There you go. So I can put that in, or I can actually say it was not found if you cannot find it on the list. If you Maybe you finished secondary school overseas. Even if you're an Australian citizen, maybe your parents travelled, et cetera. We are not getting entries based upon ATAR or what you got at year 12, though. That is irrelevant to the process. So you can just click no. There's almost no circumstances in which that is relevant for us. Most of our students have actually been working for many years or several years at least in the workforce. And so we're beyond using ATARs. If you happen to have been to university before, for example, you might have been to um, Charles Sturt, for example. And so you could click down that and that would give you the um, year you commenced, year you left and the qualification. You can put that in um, because that might give you some additional credits later on down the track. But again, as I said, for most of our students, it's unnecessary. So next part of it, though, is so you put your employment details down here. I've already filled this one in. We would recommend what what's the process for this, do you think, Khalil? I would say if you have an already up-to-date resume that you'll be attaching alongside your application, you probably can just pop in your most recent employment details from maybe your present role or your most recent role, but you don't have to put in the remaining roles. We can always read that on your CV. Excellent. Because once you add it, it will actually add more. It'll give you more details that you can then go down and put additional ones in. You only need to fill in one though. It is important to fill in one, particularly as ha uh, having work experience is a criteria for entry. And then you save and continue. And we go on to which course we're going to do. So all of IT Masters courses are what? 100% online. So that's all we have to worry about there. And what we do then search for is a course. Now we're talking about the graduate certificate in career transition, or sorry, the graduate certificate in computing brackets career transition, which is quite a mouthful, but maybe if we search on career, it will come up and there it is. Can you explain what's there um, Kat, for us? I believe only one session is showing at the moment, but sometimes there's more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes if the sessions are open for applications, you may see session one, term one, session two. So just be mindful when you are selecting the options there. Um, session one is starting in our March and session two, July. Session three is November. Right. And in fact, also the uh, applications start anything up to four or five months before the session start, don't they? Yes, that's right. Okay, so you click on that. It's not obvious, but that's what you do. You click on it, you get a little green tick, mm -hmm. and you can only apply for one course per application. So right. You are considering, sorry? Oh, I was just saying in terms with the uh, payment method, Commonwealth Supported, um, CSU has removed the full fee application. So um, if you do intend to have this uh, as a full fee application for work purposes, um, please reach out and let us know and we can chat to CSU to change this over for you. Right. You should also check whether you are eligible for one of the special group arrangements, First Nations, Explore Day, Elite Athletes, Tari University's campus, or the Indigenous Police Recruitment on our way delivery. Sorry, our way delivery. Otherwise, no. 
specialization you don't need to nominate uh, even if you knew what it was in your master's there's no requirement to do it at this point we only offer one course which is the MBA is that right that has specialization yes the MBA computing that's the only course that we offer that provides specializations and we can decide that later down the track it's mostly dependent on what subjects you'll be planning to study so once you make the application and we get in contact with you we can discuss that with your study plans right now credit recognition of prior learning this is really important because many many of our students do receive credit either for previous university courses or for being members of the ACS and having the certification from there, from doing our free short courses or from doing industry certificates of which we've certified around about 200 or more that can give credit into some of our subjects. Should we tick yes and start looking for that? Kat, what do you, what do you say? So normally in a grad cert, uh, we normally advise for you to save your credits to be used later on in the master's um, so that you're able to study uh, four subjects at the Commonwealth Supported Places um, rate. And then when, once you're in your master's, that's when you apply your studied subjects as well as any additional credits that you may be eligible for. Right. So in this case, We'll just leave it as no. And if you later decide that you do want to apply for them, you can apply for credit at any stage in your course, except for things you've already commenced, of course. Mm. And then we save and continue. Now it's documentation time. You can just upload everything in one big batch or you can put through your resume. That is really important. And additional documents what is the what are the documents we actually require here? If I'm a citizen, do I need to have a citizenship document? If you're Australian born, you don't have to put in a birth certificate or an Australian citizenship. But if you were born outside of Australia and then received an Australian citizenship, you have to upload that there. Uh, similarly, if you have you know a visa that allows you to study in Australia as well, please do upload that as well. Excellent. And unless you're trying to claim credit from a previous university study, you don't need with you don't really need to worry about transcripts nor personal statements or any of the rest. Mm -hmm. ELP might be relevant if you're born overseas. Um, it depends if you're an international student or not. There we go. You can also, of course, click I will send my documents later. But if you don't have your resume and you're not an Australian born person, then you will delay your application because we will not be able to uh, start assessing it till we get your documents. Um, and so therefore, please at least put your resume in. And if you're born in Australia, that's great. If you're not born in Australia, include your citizenship certificate. You only have two weeks to send them. If you do say, I'll send my documents later. And off you go. And then it's up to the review page. This is application number two, because I have tried to do this twice already. It tells me the date, the session that for which we are applying, the course, then all my personal details all the way through. And you'll see that all comes up, gives you a bit of a chance to check it over, all the course information. This means that I'm applying as a Commonwealth supported place, which means that the Commonwealth government is subsidizing part of my studies costs and that is open to all Australian citizens and New Zealand citizens is that correct and uh, yes. yeah New Zealand if you are studying inside Australia right so you can't study a Commonwealth supported place if you're living in Wellington or Auckland still only mm -hmm. if you're living in Australia that's correct okay and also check off that you've uh, you've got the right documents uploaded there's a pile of information that you have to read through here to declare. You click, I agree, and then you submit your application. Generally, that will come to us within probably two to three days because Charles Cert get it and do a quick check through, then pass it on to us. The process is that IT Masters actually assesses and approves your application, then sends it back to Charles Sturt for the next stage of processing. Um, that way we find that we've got through things much more quickly and easily over a period of time. And if you have any questions, then I would invite you to call 1300 885 685 if you're within Australia and speak to one of our course advisors, uh, Ryan, Nikita or Anna, 
and they will be able to take you through this process if you want themselves online in a Zoom call, or they can talk you through what you need to have. They can help you map out your course a little bit, although you know some of that will happen more formally later on, but it'll just be a good conversation to have if you're unsure about exactly what you're going to choose and where you go from here. And then once that's happened, you should, within a week of applying, have heard back from us, usually with an offer or a request for more information if something's not right. Is What else have I missed in that, uh, Lil? Well, that was pretty much everything, Shane. Excellent. Well, with that, we wish you luck with your application. We would love to see you studying with us. And if you have any questions, please give us a call or email us or get on the website and submit a form with some questions on it. We have a myriad of ways to get in contact and we are here to help. Thanks very much.